Hey everyone, in this example we are graphing y equals one third to the x. Looking for the x will help you figure out what type of parent function it is that you are working with. x being in the exponent creates something known as an exponential function. This base of a constant with the variable in the exponent is the typical structure that we look for. So what does this exact structure look like? y equals a times b to the x is one way to think of it. When you're only looking at this, the a is commonly referred to as your initial value. The initial value is another way of saying y um, intercept. I hope you know which is your y-axis and which is your x. And then that b over here, while we could just call it the base, it is important for us to know that the base could work in really one of two ways. The base can either be a growth or decay factor. So it's a growth or decay factor. Well, how do you know which one it is? Well, if that number is larger than one, it's a growth factor. And if that number is between zero and one, it's a decay factor. It won't be negative when you're dealing with exponential functions. It won't be zero and it won't be one. What is the initial value in this example? If you said one third, no, 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 it is not one third. I'm very sorry, you are incorrect. It is an invisible one, a very often forgotten invisible one. That right there is your A. That right there is your B or your base. We could also think of this as having an H and a K, which are your horizontal translation and vertical translation. Minus h would move it h units to the right and it would be found in the exponent. Since we don't have anything up there, it's really a minus zero, meaning it moves zero units to the right. Plus k would move it k units up. And since again, we don't have any number being add, added or subtracted to the end, we really could just say we have a plus zero at the end right there again moving this zero units up or down so where should we begin i would say let's begin by plotting our y-intercept so go ahead and put a dot right there <laughs> sorry somebody's barking for attention. So I have a one right here. Now, one third is my decay factor. So that means as you move one unit over to the right, you're going to constantly take one third of the previous value. So that really means your function is modeling a scenario where we're actually decreasing by two thirds and retaining one third of a value. What's one third of one? one third what's one third of one third one ninth what's one third of one ninth one twenty seventh of and that doesn't even look like it went down it looks like it went up and it shouldn't um of in math means to multiply so when you're saying one third of one or one third of one third one third of one ninth and so on that's one third one ninth one over 27. well as we keep going next you're going to have one over 81 one over 243 one over 729 it's going to be quite ridiculous and it's a little silly to continue trying to squeeze it mine is obviously terrible and lumpy is there a better way of course, if we move to the left, instead of finding one third of something, 
which is essentially dividing by three, finding one third of it, multiplying by a third, we could actually triple the y value. So if it was at one right here, one times three is three. What about three times three? Nine. What about nine times three? 27 and so on. I'm not gonna fit that, so we just do the best we can. So what are these ordered pairs we're looking at? That right there is negative two comma nine. That right there is negative one comma three. That right there is zero comma one, not one comma zero, watch for that. What about that one? That was one comma one third. Let's label at least one more. That's gonna be two comma one ninth. And we have our beautiful ordered pairs, parentheses on both sides. Is there anything else we can do to make this a little bit better? Of course, we can draw in our horizontal asymptote. Asymptote is really more or less the same word as asymptomatic. That means that it does not have any of the symptoms or characteristics of the exponential function. We're gonna to continue to get closer and closer and closer to zero in this case, but we'll never actually reach it. So the horizontal asymptote is actually at this value right here. It's always going to be at really the K value. If you needed to indicate what that was, you could write out horizontal, always spell things correctly, asymptote. That's how we spell it, take a moment. And at Y equals zero. So you have a horizontal asymptote at Y equals zero. And then maybe we want to indicate, I don't know, maybe your initial value of one, right? Obviously, again, the y-intercept will move, shift, if your um, k value is um, moving your graph up or down, and or if you are moving side to side, your y-intercept is going to change. But you could still draw like a fake dashed line to kind of represent a new shifted, you know, y-axis if you'd like, and you could sort of plot it on there, moving from sort of your new origin. Um, at the end of this video, I will attach um, two thumbnails to bring you to some other videos, just going over graphing exponentials, maybe even something about graphing logs, since some people, you know, get a little confused there. And a log is just the inverse of an exponential, like the square root and parabola, have a little bit of a bond right there. Cubic and cube root have a very important bond when it comes to being inverses and what they look like graphically. So check that out. I hope you feel confident. I hope that you know lots of algebra and I hope you're going to do really well on your exam. All right, adios.